Hello reformers and welcome back to a special feature of Regalia of Men and Monarchs. Now, this is going to be more of a special feature because I'm not entirely sure if I can do like a full series on this. If it continues to get a good amount of support, then, well, I might be convinced to do that, obviously. Usually special features are just to let you guys know that something's coming out and... You know, just a, a quick look at it, basically. But, you know, if you want to see more of this, then I would be very much happy to oblige that. Anyway, as we can see here, we're in the armory, and we're speaking to Griffith after having defeated those rats. And we're going to see what else he has to say. I am sure that eventually we will be able to fill the blanks ourselves. Uh, you're right. Let's show this to the girls, Griffith. Agreed. And, as unenthusiastic as they were, let us hope they have cleaned up the main hall. I'm sure Grandfather would nag them to death otherwise. Oh, by the way, before we go... This seems out of place. Indeed, it does not resemble any of the other armors around the castle. Thoughts? It seems Lord Amarian in origin. Sun symbols everywhere, plenty of ornamentations, highly impractical, perhaps used for ceremonial reasons. In all honesty, it is hard to tell sometimes. Lordomar's knights like it gaudy. Lordomar? The kingdom of Lordomar to the east? Militant sun worshippers? The very same, yes. Why would a Lordomarian armor be locked in here? We're in Rashtil. That's far, far away. A gift from a king, perhaps. Hmm, could be. I uh, think we should do something with it? If it doesn't involve Lady Gwen pawning it off for money, then yes. I was thinking more along the lines of main hall decoration, moving it somewhere more presentable. I do not see why not. All right, hop to it. Sometimes I think you and your sisters are more alike than you imagine, young master. After stumbling upon the castle armory, our heroes retrieve an incomplete family tree of House Lauren. While the information it presents is scarce, it gives them a solid base to start their inquiry into what exactly happened to Escalia. Additionally, it appears that someone, somehow, has left behind a suspicious suit of golden armor. Hey, you're back! How did it go? To be honest, we didn't really clean much, but we found this. What's that? Looks like a family tree. Our family tree, I assume. Yeah. You know, this may actually be useful. We're going to need stuff like this if we want to get to the bottom of this debt business. Our thoughts exactly. Ho <laughs> ho but it's more than that! Can't be narrow-minded in this, boy. It's not just about who borrowed what, you know? If you want to be a king, you need legitimacy. And that means history, lineage, solid facts, everything that constitutes rulership. You may frown upon this, Sonny, but there are folks who buy into this more than they buy into money. It's a chunk of knowledge that will help you in the long run. I agree. If we are to be nobility, we need the bearings of nobility. And if it helps us on more than one front, all the better. But I can't be running around dusting off Chronicles. There are things to do right here, right now. You're not alone in this, big bro. Remember? Let me handle the... Mm, boring ancestry stuff. I'll be digging into documents and family affairs while you do your thing. Which I assume will involve whacking uglies. What about me? What about you? I want to help, too. How about no? I think that's an excellent idea. I'd appreciate it if you two would work on this together. Are you serious? You heard him. <laughs> oh, come on, sis. Why the long face? It's going to be fun. Ah, also, I bet your duties will take you all over Rash Till, Sonny. Methinks you should also ask the nice ladies over here to look after the city while you're away. All in all, you're in this together, hmm? As a family. So are you, old fart. Ho oh, ho ho, but I'm dead already. K 
Can I trust you with this, then? Leave it to us. What about you, Griffith? You know my answer. I swore an oath on your father's dying breath that I would not leave your side. I shall follow you in the field, should you call me to do so. Very well. What's our next step? I may have a thing, Kay. While you guys were gone, I took a sightseeing trip around the city. Turns out there are still some people living in the area. Really? Yep, there's an inn near the crossroads not far away from the gates. I saw light coming from inside, so they're most likely still in business. Here, big bro, I'll show you on the map. Ho ho ho, that's excellent news. If anything, you should go and introduce yourself. You're going to be their ruler. Ugh, mingling with peasants. What exactly will this accomplish? Now, now, young lady. A king is nothing without his subjects. Any fool may claim a pile of rubble, but without people, you're just an empty title. Or a tyrant. No, oh, my boy. One cannot rule in a vacuum. You need to be a person. Their person. Not just a face on the throne. You may obtain riches and inherit lands, but in the end, true wealth lies in the hearts and minds of your people. You are only as powerful as the respect you command. Never forget this. Respect of my people. Ah, at last! The Patriarch speaks my language! Duty! Service! Loyalty! We shall forge bonds everlasting! This, I swear! Uh, yeah. What he said. Alright, I'm off to the inn. Griffith? At your side. Let's go then. An agreement is made. Kay and Griffith will handle any issues involving the adventuring away team, while Gwen and Ellie will look deeper into the family's past and tackle day-to-day -day administration. First things first, however, it turns out someone's still living in the city's inn. This is the place, young master. Welcome to the placeholder! Can I get you something? Uh, hello. Well met. We would like to speak with the esteemed owner of this fine establishment. Post haste. You're weird. Mister, why does your friend speak like a weirdo? Mm. Gods, Griffith. You just can't reel it in, can you? I'm sorry. We don't want anything. Thanks. Can we speak with the owner? Sure. What do you need? Wait, wait, I think I'm not getting through. The owner, as in the guy who owns this place? Yep. And that's you? Yep. But you're like, what, 12? Yep. All right, Griffith, you win. Lend me a hand here. You're the owner, then. Are you guys slow or something? What about that menacing gentleman behind the counter? Him? That's my dad. He works here. And? And Co owns the place, I guess. Aha! Thank you. That's what we wanted to hear. Huh, weirdos. Greetings. <clears throat> Are you the owner of this inn? I am Kay of House Lauren. I wanted to inform you that I... <clears throat> will, uh, be rebuilding. Um, please stop staring at me like that. You're freaking me out. <clears throat> so, uh, the weather's nice, yes? <clears throat> Come on, give me something to work with. <clears throat> uh, pretty please? <clears throat> Oh, for the love of... I don't answer, you know. What? Baz never speaks. What do you mean, he never speaks? He can't speak? Mm, don't know. I haven't ever heard him utter a word. How does he manage to run a tavern? 
That girl over there, Rilke, his daughter. She is his lips for all it's worth. I noticed he's a little intense. Yeah, that's Baz, staring the crap out of people one customer at a time. And you are? Shichirochi. Or just Shichi. I used to fight in the war, and that's where I met Baz. Which war? Does it really matter? Well, we're veterans, good sirs. Spending our retirement running an inn and the ass end of nowhere. Are you also an owner? Eh, uh, no. I like to think of myself as a permanent guest who doesn't pay for his drinks. <laughs> and uh, sometimes sleeps in the basement. So you're a bum. Hey, some of us quit the war with dignity. Me, I got a hole in my wallet. Also gonorrhea. I see. I take it that the inn doesn't get many visitors. Nope. Supposedly, once upon a time, these crossroads were an oft-traveled trade route. That castle over yonder, heart of Ascalia, the jewel of Reshitul. Blah, blah, blah. Long gone now. Only roaches and rubble. I'm Kay of House Lauren. Ascalia once belonged to my family. Oh, yeah? Indeed. You're here to fix things a bit, boy? More or less, yes. <laughs> hear that, Baz? We got a king over here. Business will flow again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice and all, but I'm afraid you'll be having some problems getting people to resettle. How so? It's because of the beast! They're afraid of the beast! Ah! What manner of beast are you talking about, young lady? They say it's got three heads, and its eyes are like fire, and it shoots acid out of its rear? Truth be told, uh, no one knows. Hmm. But it's true. Something stalks the woods, cutting animals. People are afraid of it. They say they can feel its eyes on their necks as they travel through the forest. Now, I've heard that even elves steer clear of these parts. Yet nobody has ever actually seen this beast. Nope. Sounds like a myth, no? Indeed. Yeah, well, myth or not, it scares people. Besides, you're the top dog around here now, laddie. If anybody should be worried about this, it's you. Hmm. Will you be slaying the beast, good sirs? Indeed we will. If it truly exists, we shall restlessly scour the land until we manage to plant a sword in its squishy yet monstrous forehead. What? Oh, it's so exciting! Can you drop by later and tell us how it went? Papa loves stories! Right, Papa? <clears throat> On my honor! Well then, good luck, laddie! Happy hunting! I'll be raising a mug here, hoping for your, eh, uh, non-demise. Now, wait a minute. Good news, it's not a complete ghost town. Bad news, a terrifying creature known as the Beast draws new people away. Though guided largely by hearsay and rumor, Kay resolves to find and put an end to this beast. Okay, so it seems like we have gotten to the party screen and we can, well, it seems like literally just take these these two. Yeah, that's all, that's all we're taking. But as you can see here, there are a number of extra 
characters and I am really, really wanting to unlock some more. I feel like it would be really, really fun to find out all of their personalities and everything. Oh yeah, also, you can get higher relation, you know, relation points with each of these characters. I believe it goes up to like level 10 or something like that and you can find out all kinds of things about all these different characters, so it's really, really cool in that, in that respect. Anyway, let us now venture forth. I hope I have actually selected them correctly. This is the general overview of the Expanse. From here you can journey between dungeons, event spots, and various other relevant points of interest. Traveling between two neighboring locations always consumes one in-game day. Entering dungeons will reserve a fixed amount of days dependent on the dungeon size. Should that number be lower than the number of days until a plot important deadline, you will be unable to enter the dungeon. Not all dungeons are available right off the bat. To unlock them, you will first need to complete the preceding dungeons in a given region. Don't wander around aimlessly, though. Time is probably the most precious resource in Regalia. This is your in-game calendar. Every year consists of nine months, each composed of four weeks. Each week, in turn, composed of seven days. Right, so here you go. This is where we need to go. As you can see, everywhere else is completely locked. So, can I, can I go over there? There we go. Yes, I can. Okay, so can I can I go inside? Can I can I not? Oh yeah, I can. Oh, okay. So I have to click on the actual door. All right. Okay, I'm I'm just getting used to the interface. Of course, this is a dungeon by the looks of things. So this is going to be quite interesting. Days to explore three. So it's going to take a bit of time to explore this. All right. So every dungeon contains three kinds of nodes: combat nodes. Obviously, you fight things in there. Adventure nodes, and oh, in short, choose your own adventure text quests. That's fun. And camp nodes. These are small roaming, free roaming zones where you can gain bonus personal bond points with your party members. That's exactly what I was talking about with the relation points. And you can also save your game. Keep in mind that locked nodes cannot be accessed until you have cleared the neighboring nodes. Alright, so let's enter this node. This is a combat node, so we're obviously going to be fighting a couple of things. I actually really enjoy the combat system. So what exactly are we doing here, Griffith? Looking for the beast. And why are we doing this? To end its reign of terror and bring peace to the land. And what are our chances of the supposed beast appearing? Well, since we are in fact chatting casually in the middle of a seemingly lifeless forest, given the laws of narrative probability, I would say... It happens now! Get ready, young master! What the hell? That our beast, Griffith? No, there's no way. You were saying? On second thought. Another ambush, this time by someone? Defeat the beast. All right, so I can assume because I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of assuming this is going to be a new companion and maybe we just have to defeat her and then she'll join us or something along those lines. I think that would be really cool if that is indeed the case. I'm going to go for some auto-deployment here. I'd actually like to see what the game recommends. I'm actually, I don't really like that actually. I like this instead. I would like Griffith to go there and I'd like K to go over there. So let's finish the deployment. As you can see, we have a couple of you know, obstacles to deal with. Oh my. Okay, so this beast is obviously going to be pretty impressive. Enrage. Empowered. Leave this to me. Wow, this is this is maybe a bit difficult, isn't it? Okay. Activations take place in a strict order defined by the combatant's initiative value. While initiative remains a fixed value, there are numerous other ways to influence that order. A new turn begins when all combatants finish their activations. Right. You can check your current... Yeah, I, I saw that when we were fighting the rats, actually, which is down here, so... Okay, we can obviously do something with K right now. I'm most likely literally just going to be giving Griffith a shield. Right at you. There you go. He has now 170 shield. Oh, yeah. And I should also mention, every single turn, whenever it goes back to K, we gain... An authority point. An, an authority point, what that can do is that allows you to use an additional action. So as you can see here, it spends one authority point to gain a bonus action, enabling the use of an, an additional skill during the same turn. Now that is very, very important in my opinion because you can use two shields. Well, actually, can you? Is there a cooldown on this? No, there's no cooldown. So you can use two shields if you so desire. You can... 
you know, use a melee attack and then a ranged attack if you want, and so on and so forth. But we're not going to do anything right now. We're just going to allow Griffith to do his thing. I'm actually going to be charging, I think, at the opponent. Oh, nice. 270 damage. Very good. Okay, so I could technically move back here. I don't see the reasoning for that. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I might actually use Blitz right now and then use Pinpoint Strike. I could use a Boisterous Challenge to blind the target enemy for two turns. I think I'm probably going to do that. Jump. Let us talk with there you go. All right. So that's really, really nice. Now we can see what she's going to do. Obviously, she's blinded, so I would assume that she might miss. Okay, she's certainly not going to miss. She's doing a lot of damage. That is very, very powerful. So as you can see, this is now teaching us about authority points. Our shared resource pool, which can be spent to use Blitz or execute ultimate skills. The party generates one authority point at the start of each turn, maximum of five. All right. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so we're just going to move K a little bit up here. And I think I'm going to give another shield to Griffith. I think that is kind of important. And I think I'm actually just going to go with that. I don't think I'm going to do anything else. Am I? No, I don't think I'm going to do anything else. So, yeah. Now, I need two authority points to be able to use Finishing Touch, which is his best ability. And it's a bit of a shame, but it's okay. So, it deals 80% of base damage, 80%... Uh, okay, we're going to use Crescent Strike here. No quarter. Yeah, because we want some more shield. We want some more shield, of course. So, let's just allow her to attack. She's probably going to deal a lot of damage because she is enraged. I was very much hoping that she would miss because she's blinded. But apparently, blind doesn't go. make her miss. I'm not entirely sure what blind actually does then. But I suppose it's okay. Because we now have the opportunity to... I think I'm just going to use Command again. Watch this. I'm going to use K as more of a support character. And he now has Fleet, which movement and initiative increase by half of the base value. That's pretty decent, but obviously what I want to do right here is switch to Griffith and use his finishing touch. Which is most likely going to finish no off the enemy. Water. There you go. We are not done yet. Very nice. We are victorious. The fabled beast appears to have slowed down. She doesn't look like a bandit, or a beast for that matter. Why would she be terrorizing the locals? I do not think we can expect civil reasoning from her, sire. I would suggest caution in your attempts to communicate. You win. You speak. There are no words between predator and prey, yes? In defeat, our roles are reversed. If words are shared, it shall be so, by your choosing. What? Are you the beast that stalks Rashtil? Rashtil? Such a name is unknown to me. You speak of names, of names that impose boundaries, but these are not mine. We share a sky, but the boundary is not mine. The mark is not mine. The territory is not mine. I understood nothing. Neither did I. Packs, tribes, kin, rights. The Kelra way, our way, my way. To overcome enemies, we become beasts in spirit. I guess that explains the outburst. Sort of. There is strength in such bonds, as in all bonds born out of respect. We take only what is given and never force our way. I still cannot make heads or tails of what you're saying. <sighs> the beast chooses the man, and the man accepts the beast. But it is a process, not an act. Something to claw and strive for. For many days and many nights, many moons that come and go. But the exact count is meaningless. One cannot return without finding the right beast. So unless I'm getting utterly confounded here, you're saying... You are searching for your beast. Yes. And this search brought you here. Just so. I have never heard about this tribe of yours, these Kelra. The turtle and the eagle both share a sky. But though the turtle wonders about the clouds, he will never take flight, yes? Huh? It is a color unknown to your kind. 
much as yours is unknown to mine. Is she really the same girl who just tried to rip our throats out? But anyway, what does all of this mean? I am sorry, but I can't allow you to run around the woods anymore. I am a lord of sorts, of these lands, and I could really use some popular support. You aren't helping, you know. You need to leave. Then we are at odds. But as the victor, you are within rights to request so. If that is your will. What would happen if you were to abandon your right and go back home? My siblings would devour me whole. Uh, figuratively speaking? No. Young master? I know what you're about to ask me, Griffith, and I'm not sure I'll like it. Come now, we all follow our oaths, and hers seems to be of great import, to her at the very least. Well, we're in the middle of something ourselves, remember? You're asking me to put her own good above ours. No, I am asking you to be the man your father thought you would always be. Which is? The better man. Eh. Sire. Damn you, Griffith. What if we made a deal? The predator does not barter with prey. He does not want you to be his prey. He wants you to be his partner. Your lion speaks, yet confuses. Elaborate. Lion? Come with us. We'll give you shelter and resources, and hopefully it'll help you find your beast. A cage of wood and stone yields no answers. That may be so, but you won't have to stay in one. As a member of my retinue, I expect people to honor your special outdoor privileges. And, uh, small eccentricities. Emphasis on small. No doubt you would price this favor in my strength, yes? What for? You heard it yourself. We need all the hands we can get to rebuild the city. I am sure Master K would be very pleased with such a capable warrior as yourself. I see. Then the boon is granted, and so I will join your pack. I shall follow the duckling and the lion so that together we may fulfill our oaths. Duckling? Really? Why do I get a duckling while you get to be a lion? I have absolutely no idea. Now, uh, the girls. I have a feeling this will take a long, long while to explain to Gwen. In a surprising turn of events, the beast of Rashtel turns out to be a ferocious young woman named Signy. After a confusing attempt to communicate, Signy agrees to aid Kay in exchange for help with her trials, or rather, her search for a totemic animal. With the matter of the beast resolved, it's time to report back to the grandfather. Alright, so I think... With that, I will be ending this episode off here. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.